Hello everyone, my name is Quang Wei and I'm from IELTS uh, like Taiwan from IELTS engineering team. I'm happy to be here to share some of things learning of how to build efficient event tracking mechanism with Flutter. Event tracking is an essential part for mobile app development because we use it to track what features of our app that users like and more importantly what they don't like. In addition, Flutter is a new cross-platform tool that we can use to build both iOS and Android app using only one programming language called Dart. Flutter's code base, a single code base concept is pretty powerful and we use uh, embracing new technology is important in line, so we use Flutter to build our new app called Line Shopping. I hope you like my talks today if you are planning to use Flutter to build your app. Line Shopping app is a new app that we use Flutter to build and release it exclusively in Taiwan for providing more native experience for our users. It features aggregating multiple BE Commons platforms into one single app. Users can find all kinds of products and compare the prices among these platforms to get the best bargain. What's more, our users are rewarded with line points when they purchase a product in Line Shopping app. Because Flutter is a new tool, in order to build this app becomes a challenge for our team. We need to design the core architecture and event tracking mechanism from the ground up. As you may already know, event tracking is a way we can check the frequency of our users enter certain screens and how many times they tap certain buttons. After gathering a lot of event data, our data engineers can analyze the result and find what features are liked by our users and more importantly, what they don't like. From the result, our team will know how to improve our app. Event tracking is a pretty mature thing and widely used in mobile app development. However, when using Flutter, things become a little different because everything is new to us. Although the basic idea is the same, there are many things that we need to consider, such as what tool are we going to use. After surveying, our team decided to use two tools for event tracking. One is third-party plugin, which we use Firebase, and the other one is line tracking service. Firebase is a famous tool, so I think I don't need to do extra introduction, and it provides Flutter plugin so we can use it directly. On the other hand, line tracking service is tracking tool developed by line and used for line internal usage. It provides both iOS and Android libraries, however, it doesn't support Flutter yet. So our team need to build a Flutter plugin by ourselves. When you are using Flutter, you may come across this situation that a plugin or a library you want to use doesn't support Flutter yet. So you might need extra time to build a Flutter plugin by yourself. It would be challenged as well, especially if you are using Flutter for the first time. Because both Firebase and Line Tracking Service are external libraries, so we use two wrapper classes to control them. For controlling the two tracking tools in a one centralized place, we build a class called Tracking Manager. Tracking Manager contains send tracking event function, which will send the tracking event. In Flutter, which is an essential part for handling user interaction, so when our user interact with line shopping app, it will trigger send tracking event function we set up previously in tracking manager for notifying Firebase and line tracking service to send the event back to their server for later analysis. This is the basic mechanism in our app. Our next challenge is how are we going to secure code quality in every code change and release. Secure code quality is important in agile development. Our team use Scrum and we have two weeks release cycle, which means we release fast and our code change constantly. Flutter is different from current iOS and Android code implementation. 
which is plays an important role for handling user interactions, and Numis widget built out the widget tree in the Flutter app. If we want to make sure our event tracking code is continued to work in every code change and release, a testing for widget is a must. Flutter provides three ways of testing, unit tests, widget tests, and integration tests. Unit test is handy for verifying the behavior of a single function or class. Widget test is used to test widget class and the logic inside. Integration test is Flutter UI testing. Our team utilizes all three testing methods and integrate them with our automated CICD pipeline for providing more uh, secure code quality and we can make sure our code will be always working in every release. Today, I would like to introduce how our team use widget test to make sure our event tracking codes continue to work in every code change by giving a simple example. Imagine there is a widget called my widget, and user can tap it as, as like a button. Inside my widget, there's a tracking manager class which were responsible for sending tracking event. Every time when we start to build our test, marking is important to achieve test isolation. In Flutter, we can use a popular library called Markito to mark object easily so that we don't need to do by ourselves. Because we don't want to send a real tracking event in testing environment, so we need to use Markito to mark our tracking manager class. The syntax of use Markito is really simple. We just extend mark and then implement our tracking manager class. Next, we can start to build our widget test. In the beginning, we need to initialize our tracking, mark tracking manager. Then, in the block of test widget, we can use tester.pump widget to build our target widget, which is my widget. And then we can use dependency injection to replace uh, mark tracking, to use mark tracking manager to replace tracking manager inside my widget to achieve test isolation. Then we can use tester.tap function to simulate user tap action, which should trigger send tracking event function inside Mark Tracking Manager. Next, we can use expect function to assert my widget is existing, which is a basic assertion we can use in a widget test. Finally, we can use a verify function provided by Markito to assert Mark Tracking Manager's send tracking event function did be called. Of course, usually we will do more assertion to check whether the correct event name or event parameters are sent. It depends on what you need to check to secure your code quality. Having substitute tests and integrate them with our automated CICD pipeline, then we can know in every code change our code will be tested automatically and our event tracking code will be continued to work in every release. Let's wrap up for today's talk. Using new tools such as Flutter is a challenge for our team, but during the process we have learned so many things, so I think it's a fun journey. Second, Flutter's single code-based concept did help to fasten development. However, because Flutter is a new tool, if you want to use a library that doesn't support Flutter yet, you may need extra time to build the Flutter plugin by yourself. Finally, remember to use unit test, widget test, integration test, and integrate them with your automated CICD pipeline to secure your code quality. Today, I demonstrate how our team used widget test to test our code, and I believe it will save you tons of time. I hope you like my talk today. Happy coding! Thank you.